All right, so we're going to start right here and just start easing into some of these other colors as well. So, ready or not, brush, I'm getting out of the water. I'm just dabbing it off a little bit. I do not need it sopping wet. Let's just dab it off. And I want us to take our bright blue paint and we're going to take that about a hand's width down. Four fingers, five fingers, that's fine. But we're going to come just right up here. I'm going to mix it here in a minute, but so I'm just putting a little bit of white in and now I'm going to start dragging that white up, up into the sky just a little bit, just so that line of where that white and the blue meet is not so harsh. So I overlap that blue just a little bit or a little bit lighter because I want to be able to blend my other colors up into it. So I'm going to clean off my brush on top of the last blue section and worked it up just a little bit. But now I'm going to clean off my brush and I'm just kind of tough again. And then I'm going to go into my white paint again. So just pure white paint. And I'm just going to give myself, make this a little bit softer. I want a little bit, maybe two fingers of just white paint because, and some yellow, and I want them to be able to blend up without mixing with the blue. So I want a little barrier in between. So I'm just, gonna, I know you can't see it, but I have about three fingers, two to three fingers worth of just white paint. There is a little bit of blue streaking in here. That's okay. Color. This is going to be a little different though. This little section is kind of the sunrise section over here. So we're going to be filling in just this right hand, left hand side, right, left, right, left, this left hand side. We're going to be filling this in with our bright purple. So that really bright, like it's a beautiful bright purple. We're going to be filling it in just about halfway. When we do this though, I don't want it to be like a perfect square of purple. That's not what I want at all. I want these two colors to gently blend into each other just a little bit. So watch me as I go. I've got my bright purple on my brush and I'm starting just at the base, right? Here's the bottom of my white. This is can and I'm just going to gently paint this in and this is going to come and notice how messy my edges are. They're not a perfect square. Just gently blend in with that white so I don't have such a distinct color right there. I want this to just blend. So right where these two colors meet, I'm just going to start blending them up and down into each other. So now my purple is just gently, I'm pulling it gently up into that white area, that little barrier that we get. Blend really nice. So if those two colors over mix, overlap a little bit, look at how far up I'm going. I'm kind of going up a little bit higher just because I want some of that purple and blue to kind of fade into one another. Those two mix really nice. For a hands width down, maybe I can come down a little bit farther. I'm going to come down maybe about a hands width. So I'll give it one more little stroke right there. How about that? Now over here on this side, we're going to be putting in that bright yellow. So with my bright yellow, I'm going to start over here first and pull it into the canvas. I'm not going to start right on top of the purple. Those two colors can look really nice when they're very gently blended, but if you over blend them, they'll look kind of muddy and we don't want that. So I'm getting more yellow and I'm blending my yellow up into that white section. Remember? but I'm not gonna go so high that I get up into the blue because then we're gonna have green, we don't want that. Barely feather. And it'll start getting this really warm kind of burnt look. And I'm gonna go right back and forth between these two colors. And hopefully this will be nice and streaky. I don't want it to be one perfect line right in the middle. I want them to a few little pops of color. So we have that fluorescent red, that really bright kind of orangey red. I just want a little bit. I'm still using my big brush, but I have just a little bit. I, I barely on my brush because I want to just add a few pops of this color, a few streaks into this yellow section only. We're not going to really worry about it over here, but just in this yellow section, I put two little lines there that you can see with the same brush. I'm going to just maybe go once or twice across it just to soften it, fade it in a little bit. So just a couple little pops of that red in there, just to give it a little bit more heat on that side. Okay, my brush is still dirty. I'm going to go right down here 
and start kind of softening these colors. So I want a stripe of white just underneath all of this. Stripe of white, and I'm just going back and forth on the same stripe with white, but I want this to start dragging up just a little bit into our yellow and our purple and just let it soften. I just keep going back and forth over the same spot. And about here, and then we're gonna start working on our water, just about from here down. So just about from here down, we're gonna go about maybe a third of the way up from the canvas. A little bit more white. A little bit more white right here. Our water right down here. And that's just gonna be, we're gonna go down with like maybe four fingers of blue, four fingers of that fluorescent violet, that purple color, and then we're gonna end it down here with a really dark violet. So it's just gonna get a little bit darker as it goes down. But nice hands, spread hands from the bottom. Just below halfway mark. So I'm gonna add a little bit of blue. And right here I have about two fingers worth of that just plain white. So I'm gonna go right here with some blue. Straight up blue, nothing else. The hands with four to five fingers of blue below it. Now see that line, see the blue and that purple? See how stark that is, that line? We don't want that, we wanna blend it. So I'm gonna just keep going right here and I'm gonna start gently going upward into my blue. And where those two colors meet right there, I'm just gonna keep going back and forth and back and forth. You can take your purple up and take your blue down. Right purple. Now I have blue on my brush, I have purple on my brush, so as I get going down here, it's getting more of this like kind of plum color. It's really pretty. Allow it, let it happen. This is gonna be kind of the meat of what we see the, in our land, our water down there, I'm sorry right in our little lake, right about this. Right now, I'm about three fingers from the bottom. We're gonna fill that up with dark purple. So just keep going back and forth, blending those two colors so they are seamless. They just kind of fade into one another. Go right into my dark purple. Same thing. I'm gonna put dark purple in here. Now most of this dark purple is gonna be covered up because our land's down here, but we will see some of it kind of sneaking in. So I'm gonna fill up this bottom two or three fingers that I had left of dark purple, but I am gonna take that dark purple and just drag it up just a little bit into my fluorescent violet color because I just want those colors all to mix and blend, just kind of blend and flow, which will be good. So you're gonna just put a few little stripes of white in there and then just blend them in, one or two, and you'll be done. Gives it a little bit of a reflection, something interesting, a little bit of movement, like there's some rippling going on in our lake. And I'm just gonna give myself a line going all the way across. This is gonna be the base of my dark mountains. and kind of that land back there as well. Now my mountains, you'll notice, let's take a look at these mountains. So here's my land right here. It kind of curves down a little bit. So if it's not perfectly straight, that's fine. It gives it a little bit of interest. If you kind of bring it down and look, it just curves around just a little bit, that's okay. So we have one nice big mountain here. It's about a hand's width tall. It's gonna come up to a peak, kind of comes down. And we got another little peak right there, and it comes over. As it ends right here, we have about four fingers. So we'll go about four fingers tall. This mountain right here is about four fingers tall. This one is about a hand's width tall. I just want two. So we're gonna be putting in two little mountain ranges because after we're gonna paint in these little blue ones behind it. So I wanna make sure that we have two sections there so we can have two blue trees as well. So keep that in mind as we go. So let's go up about a hand's width. Again, this was about a hand's width up. Open hand, look at all the way open. About a third of the canvas. So go about a third of the way up. And we're just gonna make this little horizon line. Everything down in here is gonna be our lake. And what I say, I said this one was about a hand's width tall, so it's gonna come to be about right there. 
So maybe I'll give myself a little bit of a mountain range like this. And I'll give myself another smaller mountain over here. Now the base of these mountains down here is actually going to be the land. So we're going to be covering up a lot of that area with bushes. So we're going to go ahead and just fill this in down here mountains down here. Here's the base of them. All along the base of these mountains, we have a lot of little bushes going along. That's going to be kind of the background. So we've got this foreground here with all the land. Now back here, this is also a bank. So we've got like this bank back here with all this land on it. So we're going to be putting bushes all along the base of these mountain mountains. But we're going to use our little brush because we're going to just be kind of putting them in in the background. So we're going to little mountain peaks, one back here and one back here. They are not going to be taller brush. Uh, that should be just enough paint, and we're going to mix up a color. And we're just going to add in right over here this one little peak of a mountain here and a little peak of a mountain here. But again, they will not be small brush. I want you to grab two scoops of that blue. One. Draw in. A little mountain peak, just like that. And then I'm going to fill it in. This thin, easy coat there. Same thing. Don't go any higher than your purple mountains. Be plain black. Just straight black. We don't need to do any fancy mixes, nothing like that. So take your big brush and some black paint. And let's just make a strip right along the bottom of black paint. Fingers wide, that would be just perfect. But remember, this side over here kind of had that nice hill coming on, so it gave it a little bit of a curve right around here. So I'm going to just kind of pull up and kind of connect these two. So right where this mountain is, you can see right where it starts. I'm going to just kind of put a little bit of a line right here. And I'm just going to fill in that little corner down there with black paint. So it's got that little... And I'm just going to tap. I'm going to go straight onto my canvas. I'm not going to push very hard because I want it to just be like this. I want to be able to see all those like little leaves is what I want. So right down here, I'm going to just make a little mound. And it can go up fairly high. Some of these are going to go up. Let's take a look. This is <laughs> and same thing coming up my little hill. It's going to be nice and messy. Okay. In our foreground up front. But we're going to start with those guys in the back in just a minute. But I want you to clean off your brush. When you're all done, kind of stippling those in. Look, I went about four fingers up. This is kind of coming all the way up the side there. This painting will stay very dark for a little while. We're going to put our trees in, and they're going to be really dark and kind of hard to see. But at the very end, we're going to highlight them, and they'll just pop, and you'll be able to see them. And we'll